Hi everyone, it's Melinda. I am very excited to uh, do this video today because it is one of my very favorite minerals. It's one of the very first minerals that just tugged at my guts as soon as I saw it. I just, I don't know, there was a connection there with it. Um, even though it doesn't always necessarily look like, I don't know, the most impressive mineral. There's something about that blue color. I don't I don't know what it is. I just absolutely love <clears throat> celestite. Um, and a lot of people do uh, misidentify celestite as like a blue quartz cluster of some sort. That's very easy to do when you're starting out because it, it you know it kind of resembles quartz. I, I totally understand that. Um, so I just thought this video would be good, not just because I love it, but you know, a little bit of an educational moment as well. Um, so often we will see uh, the blue ones labeled celestite, and that does tend to be the most common name for it, celestite. Celestine, on the other hand, <clears throat> is usually labeled on specimens that look a little bit different than, than the norm of what we would see at like a metaphysical shop or something these blue ones kind of fall into that category more so than my Celestine uh, specimen. But the truth of the matter is, they are all the same mineral. Uh, these clear, platy, beautiful crystals are the same mineral uh, makeup as these ones here. And while they do look clear in person, they, ha they do have a little, very, very slight light blue tinge to them. Uh, so they are still indeed uh, blue. <clears throat> so you can say celestite, celestine, it's basically what you prefer because they are the same thing. Um, so celestite is what I'll say going forward. It is the more popular of the two. Uh, it's a strontium sulfate mineral. And uh, along with celestine, strontianite are the two principal sources of the element strontium, and that's commonly used in fireworks and various uh, metal alloys, which is shocking to me. I always find it <laughs> shocking when I find out what they do with our beauties in the, in the non-mineral collecting world. Um, in this case, they would possibly be turned into fireworks, which is, you know, bizarre. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so I'll start off with my little one. And this one actually has clusters on both sides. It's my first piece. And it was that first piece that just, like I said, just totally wowed me. And I knew I had to have it in my collection. I knew it would be a favorite of mine. And it's such a very light ghostly blue. I don't know if it's because I'm an artist and that kind of odd color you know, resonates with me, or if it's just a very calming, soothing color and a beautiful crystal. I don't know, but it's, it's something else. There's the other side. It's just as beautiful as the other. <clears throat> so, you could probably guess that the name of this mineral is given to it based on its beautiful, uh, very light blue color. Uh, the name Celestite is uh, derived from the Latin word celestis, meaning celestial, and celestis is derived from the Latin word salem, meaning sky or heaven. So it is pretty aptly named, I would say. <laughs> Isn't that spectacular? Oh my goodness, all those little crystals. The earth blows my mind. Here's my bigger one. It is incredibly heavy. Incredibly heavy. One of my heaviest minerals. It, it's unbelievable, actually. Like, my hand almost quivers with the weight of it. <laughs> Very solid. Isn't it gorgeous? <clears throat> so, celestine crystals are often found in geodes, which you can tell this one probably is a piece of. The world's largest celestine geode is 35 feet, uh, about 11 meters in diameter at its widest point. Uh, you'd be able to find it in uh, the village of Putten Bay, Ohio, on South Bass Island on Lake Erie. 
the geode was actually converted into a viewing cave. My god, can you imagine? A crystal cave that you can actually enter. And the bottom floor of the geode uh, is flat and safe to go in. Uh, they've removed all of those like bottom crystals. And apparently the largest ones that they removed were as wide as 18 inches across. <coughs> that is incredible. And they each weighed up to 300 pounds per crystal in this geode. Totally, absolutely amazing. It is incredibly heavy. I just, I can't even, you'd have to carry it to understand. <laughs> wow. all right <clears throat> so obviously this one over here is a little bit different than the norm of what we would see it's from Benu Kir mountains uh, and that's in Turkmenistan <clears throat> this location produced mostly geodes so this would probably be a chunk of one it is very fragile try to show you the back there you go and now we'll just focus more so on the front it is super super fragile it's probably mm, at least one of my top two <laughs> most fragile pieces in my collection but it's also one of my very favorites oh i absolutely love it <clears throat> Excuse me. So this specific location uh, produced mostly blue celestine crystals on red celestine. So the red that you see is not a different mineral. It's the same mineral. However, it's been colored by hematite inclusions like an iron oxide. That's what gives it that red color at the base. But they are still celestine or celestite crystals. Just like these beautiful, oh, they almost look like glass shards. It's unbelievable. Yeah. One of my most prized beauties. I absolutely love it. There you have it, folks. Celestite, Celestine, either one, whichever you prefer, they are the same mineral. And they are these beautiful, gorgeous, um, crystally blue minerals. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time.